there, and welcome to the Pets of Plenty channel. Making a selection between the Brohomer and the Canic Corso can be pretty challenging as both breeds are outstanding in their unique ways. We understand this challenge, so don't worry, because as usual, we've got you covered here on Pets of Plenty. Today on the channel, we've gathered all the helpful information about these breeds to help you make the ultimate choice on the dog which gets that particular spot in your home with a nine-rounded battle that covers everything from their history to their health. Before we continue though, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets of Plenty membership after clicking the join button. All right, here we go. Bro Homer versus Cane Corso. Let's start the fight. Round one, history. Cane Corso dates to ancient Rome and beyond. Most experts think they're related to the extinct Greek molasses dogs, which were later crossed with English fighting dogs to make the Roman pugnaces, which are dogs used for attacking wild animals. In the past, they fought with the Roman legions, chased boar and other wild animals, and later protected farm property, flocks, and people. Over its long history, the breed has been used as war dogs, big game hunters, guard dogs, farm dogs, and more. After World War II, the Corso so almost went into extinction. However, in the 1970s, it became popular again in Italy, and in the 1980s, it came to the United States. The AKC recognized the breed in 2010. Their name in Latin means guard of the estate, but some Corso supporters, such as Vanda Wally, think it means coursing dog, which refers to how they hunt not by scent, but sight. No one truly knows where the Brohomer originated from. Still, most people think it mixes the German Mastiff and Danish dogs. Brohomers have a lengthy history, with their roots extending back to the 1500s. For centuries, they were presented to monarchs and the European aristocracy. At the time, many rich mansions owners and royal families employed the breed as security dogs. It was a common practice to use them to herd sheep and have them standing vigil over the flock while the shepherds slept. Brohomers were used for hunting, in addition to being guard dogs. However, hunting tactics evolved during the 18th hundreds, and Brohomer's population declined to extinction. Fortunately, a Danish nobleman named Niels Frederick Sekestad took up the challenge of rescuing this magnificent breed from death and created breeding standards that transformed the Brohomer into the distinctive look we see today. The Brohomers were named after Niels Frederick Sekestad's house, Castle Brohome, where they were raised to stringent standards and were employed to defend the castle and function as companions. They were brought to the United States in the late 2000s and were registered with the American Kennel Club in 2013. They're off to a great start on our scoreboard with one point apiece. Round 2 Appearance Brohomer is a well-muscled, powerful, and dominant-looking Mastiff-type dog. His head is enormous, and his chest is deep and broad. He has thick and somewhat loose skin, especially around the neck. His skin should be well-pigmented and never freckled. His nose, lips, and eye rims are black. His close-cut coat is short and sheds periodically. The Brohomer is yellow with the black mask, pure black, or red gold with white markings on his chest and feet. The Corso's size, strength, and somewhat majestic look are his prominent features, making him a popular option for a guard dog. Full-grown female Canic Corsos weigh 88 to 99 pounds, while males can exceed 110 pounds. You'll identify him with his enormous chest, skull, and wrinkled forehead. You'll commonly see them with clipped ears, which is controversial because it has no demonstrated health benefits. Canic Corsos colors include black, gray, fawn, red, and brindle for the short double-layered coat. Almond-shaped eyes can be brown, yellow, or blue. These vast dogs' majesty and chiseled good looks have left a lasting impression on us. We guess they both deserve a point each for this round. Two points for the Brohomer and two points for the Cane Corso. Round 3 Temperament each dog has a unique temperament, as various things influence its behavior. It's pretty challenging to make broad statements regarding the temperament of an entire breed. The Brohomer or Cane Corso is an excellent choice if you want a companion dog. 
Their energetic and welcoming demeanor makes them a perfect choice for families. Both are extremely loving toward family members. Both breeds are highly intelligent. They understand and remember new orders after 15 to 25 repeats. Catacorsos and Bromhomers enjoy playing much like any other dog breed. Sometimes they bark when playing, but make no mistake, these are guard dogs. Although Catacorsos seldom bark, they're ideal if you like quiet dogs. The Brohomer is highly vocal, so look elsewhere if you want a calm dog. They modify their barks based on their mood and message. Brohomer simply performs better with youngsters. Even though they are considerably more extensive than lap dogs, they sometimes behave like little breeds. They'd rather be close to their owners than anywhere else. Brohomers adore children. They're typically kind and tolerant of them. However, as previously said, temperaments vary depending on the particular dog. The aloof candy corsos may take a little longer to adjust to children, but that doesn't mean they can't be pleasant to them. Them. Bro homers have a remarkable capacity for adapting to new ways of life and settings. They are pretty adaptable and may follow their owner wherever they go. We can't say the same for the Corso, who prefers to remain with what we know like the rest of us. The Bro Homer has a paw up on the competition as he checks all the right boxes, so he takes the point for this round. We're now at three points to two for the Candy Corso. Round 4 Grooming both breeds require only the most essential grooming. These dogs need seasonal flea treatment and a trip to the groomer when the trim is necessary. To avoid infections, clean their eyes and ears regularly. Caddy Corso and Brohomer are great possibilities if you don't have the time, talent, or money to care for a high-maintenance dog. Brohomer and Caddy Corso are middling shedders, which is neither excellent nor so horrible. It is impossible to stop shedding. However, these breeds must be brushed frequently. Hate drooling? Then you should pass up on Canny Corso and go with the Bro Homer. Both dogs must be bathed every four to six weeks or more frequently if necessary. They both get full points for being low maintenance. Moving on with four points for the Bro Homer and three for the Canny Corso. Round 5 Socialization Due to their naturally suspicious nature, Canic Corsos require extensive socializing from a young age. A lack of early and sustained socialization can lead to aggressive behavior against humans and other animals. In most cases, the Brohomer is not hostile towards humans or other canines. However, socializing your puppy early is recommended if you want him to mature into a well-adjusted pup. Socialize your new puppy with the sights and sounds of a home environment. Also, take your dog to a puppy kindergarten, introduce him to the neighbors, and schedule regular visits to the local stores and companies to continue his lifelong socialization. The only way he'll ever learn to tell the difference between a harmless and dangerous situation is if you force him to experience both. Both brazen pups, the Brohomer wins again as the easier dog to socialize. Five points to four, everyone. Round six, training. Canny Corsos are naturally strong-willed dogs with dominant personalities. These traits make him a great family and home protector. However, his natural propensity to take charge might be bothersome to an owner who can't define his or her place as a pack leader and regulate this behavior. Anyone contemplating this breed should be ready to set firm limits since this dog will undoubtedly put them to the test. Brohomers might be tricky, but they'll follow if you train them consistently. Both breeds benefit significantly from early training because of their high intellect. Still, it's best to get started on the first day you bring your puppy home. At eight weeks, they can learn all you teach them. Don't wait until he's six months old to start teaching him. You'll have a stubborn dog to deal with. We understand that treats and praise are fantastic tools for promoting acceptable conduct. When it comes to teaching animals, praising frequently works better than punishment. Both breeds are receptive to positive reinforcement but may also benefit from occasional reprimand. This includes speaking sternly and refusing to buckle under pressure. Because these are confident creatures, you must likewise be convinced and maintain calm when training them. Suppose there's one thing these giant pups have in common. In that case, they're clever and eager to please which makes training them more straightforward. But the Brohomer gets the point for being an easier breed to train. So, it's six points to four for the Candy Corso. Round 7 Exercise 
Every dog needs adequate exercise to be healthy, relaxed, and happy. When your dog is active, you'll lessen or eliminate destructive behavior. Pro homers have medium level exercise demands. To be in top form, they need moderate exercise for about 45 minutes daily. Canna Corsos, on the other hand, need vigorous exercise regularly. Expect him to walk or jog at least a mile per day as this breed isn't always content with sitting about all the time doing nothing. A board can a corso becomes destructive and their size allows them to wreak much damage. The point for this round goes to the Brome Homer for having a reduced exercise demand. Seven points to five, everyone. The Bro Homer is taking the lead. Round eight, diet and nutrition. The Brohomer breed typically consumes approximately three cups of dry food per day. In contrast, the Corso breed consumes about four and a half cups of dry food daily. For obvious reasons, the daily feeding costs of these giant breeds would be far higher than that of a smaller or average-sized dog. To ensure that these dogs get the nourishment they need, it is recommended that they be fed a dog food mixture that has been designed for giant breeds. Treats have their place, but they should be consumed sparingly to avoid weight gain. They get one point each for having the same amount of feeding cost. We are now at eight points for the Bro Homer and six for the Cane Corso. Round nine, health. Undoubtedly, the standard of care given to dogs is a significant component of the dog's overall lifespan. However, other factors, like the dog's breed, also play a role. Canic Corsos tend to outlive Brohomers by a few years with a lifespan of 10 to 12 years. The average age at death for a Brohomer is between 8 and 12 years. They were designed to be healthy and hardy, so these dogs seldom experience serious medical problems. Because of their heft, they are at increased risk of developing bloat and hip and elbow dysplasia as they age because of their weight. Solid and sturdy, these dogs live out their expected years in good health. The Canic Corso takes the last point with this round. And that's the end of today's contest. The Bro Homer defeats the Corso by a one palm margin. We'd love to conclude by saying every human has a choice. It is vital to consider your personal needs and environment during adoption. Both dog breeds can work excellently as a pet or companions. This is our evaluation. Remember, yours may be different. In addition, before adopting a dog, do well to seek professional advice from the breeder and your veterinarian. What are your thoughts on today's contest? Let us know in the comments section. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button to get early access access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.